JC Direct this week, Capitec, a core portfolio holding Boren versus Colgray M3. NVIDIA looking to break higher. Purple has broken higher. Afrimat, uh, horror trading update, but no surprise. And Wilson Bailey, a very long-term chart looking very, very good. This is JC Direct episode 606 for 10 October, recorded on the day just ahead of market open. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by just one lap.com. Let's kick off with that uh, Calgary M3 and Boren. We've had trading updates from both of them in the last couple of weeks. The Calgary one very strong, the Boren one very weak. Intuitively, this makes a bit of sense, right? Because uh, Capitec is selling into largely lower income. They've got a lot more flexibility around where they're going to be selling and their particular price point. So they can see tougher times coming and build smaller apartments, cheaper apartments to both build and sell. Borwin can do that within reason, but their starting prices is sort of a million plus. So they've got less flexibility in that regard. So Borwin absolutely struggled, uh, whereas Capitec have got an excellent trading update. And let's go have a look at uh, the charts, the numbers, and if either of them are particularly offering any potential at this point. Disclaimer up front, I hold uh, Calgary M3 shares. I bought on that breakout there, sort of, uh, I think it was August of last year. Yep, I was in Durban at the beach. My in price is about 350, 360, somewhere around there. And you can see it, it, all the, the, the different levels and the one that we've seen this week, the break higher, closing yesterday at 660. I think it got up to 669. Yep, that was the high so far for the week. And looking strong, absolutely looking strong in that regard. Uh, the results will be out, I think, there Monday. Uh, I've got an interview with uh, uh, the CEO. Uh, he's leaving. We're getting Ben Piermo Herbert coming back. He's the, uh, not the original, but he was the previous CEO. Uh, MD of Memorial Parks also leaving. A lot being made around that? I don't think so. Uh, Vickers has had a, a long tenor at uh, 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 Calgro and really... A tough time. This was a company that, and if we look, zoom out a little bit more, even ahead of the, the, the pandemic, was really struggling. And, and there were questions whether it could survive. And, well, it is, and it is uh, doing great. If we look at a quick look at some, some valuations, there won't be any sense of uh, uh, target and, and, and consensus. It's too small a cap for that. I mean, the PE is uh, currently three and a half uh, but truthfully, they're going to make about a rand, that's mid-range of earnings for six months, call that uh, two rand for the full year, puts them on around a three plus PE looking forward. This could easily be, a, this, this should be a 10 PE stock. In a normal world, this should be a 10 PE stock, which says it should be an 18 rand share price. I'm not saying it's going to 18 rand. Let's be very clear about that. Those books, so the book's around 12. The book is obviously a lot of land that they have in their land bank, as they call it. And I don't want to discredit that. Absolutely. Uh, it is land. They do own it. I said before, it's not easy to sell that land uh, and, and necessarily realize its value. The way you realize the value is to build the apartments. But certainly a, a cheap stock. And for, I mean, for financial year 25, they're expecting uh, HEPs up uh, uh, 8%. Uh, the market is going to do way, way better than that. There are actually some uh, price targets here, which is going to be interesting. There is you know, a price target which says 9 Rand. I think that's probably about a fair price for it from this point. I hold, as I said, I, and I continue to hold Capitec. The other side of the coin is Baldwin Properties, uh, a whole different uh, kettle of fish here. So what uh, no, what I'm looking for is that one. Uh, here we've got a price to book of 0 0.2. Again, a PE of 4.6. That price earnings is going to move higher as the earnings come in a lot lower. The clear winner here is Colgro. Make absolutely no mistake about that. Colgro is the better of the, the businesses, the profitability and everything else. But i got to say, surely there's something in Baldwin. I mean, the, 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 the fact that they sell at lower price points is not insignificant. Sorry, at higher price points is not insignificant. But 
we're just seeing things looking better into the future, right? We, we know the story. I don't need to repeat all the stuff about rates, inflation, two pots, uh, ESCOM, and so the list goes on. Borwin starts to get very, very interesting. The market initially didn't like their trading update, which came out last week. It's that candle there. There is no surprise around that. But at about that 230 so level, if it can break and maybe 240 or so is a more important break point. But at this point in time, I don't hold Borwin. But I got to say, I can see one of two things happening with Borwin. The, the, the future results going forward, both for Borwin and Capitech, it was the, the period ending August. The, the, the periods ending February of 25 and August of 2025 are going to show markedly better results. Make no mistake about that. And we're just going to see at some point these charts uplift. The inverse for Borwin is potentially a delisting. When you're that cheap relative to, to, to price to book net asset value, Surely at some point someone swoops in and says, hey, we're going to take you and, 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 and run. I mean, that, that, I think, is, is an easy uh, 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 out for it. But if they stay listed, I think there's some value here. I really do think there's some value here. They can start getting some profits coming through uh, and, and increasing HEPs. So I prefer Colgro. I hold Colgro. But I think there is a space in the world where perhaps we should be holding uh, some Baldwins as well and some opportunity there uh, just from Baldwin. So uh, not giving up on it, not holding it, but let's keep a close eye on it and see what is uh, happening with Baldwin at the same time. So events, we have had the ones from ETFSA that is available uh, on the website, just one lap.com. You'll find the video from that uh, event last Thursday. What we've got next week, uh, Professor Adrian Seville, he's going into 25 years of being in the market, lessons, triumphs, what's worked, what hasn't worked. I said this before, uh, I think Adrian, everyone in this industry is a thinker, you need to be. I think Adrian thinks differently, and that's always been what I've liked about him and how he approaches markets and the answers he comes up with and how he does it. Uh, he's also going to talk about his Hummingbird portfolio, which has done spectacularly well. You can attend webcast. You can attend live uh, at the Standard Bank head office in Rosebank. And then we're doing one, and this is more for industry rather than individuals, but maybe you're interested. Uh, with Standard Bank, how to list an actively managed certificate on the JSE. What are the requirements? So you're a fund manager, asset manager. You're thinking, hey, I've got a little portfolio here I manage for clients. Well, do you want to put it on the JSC? We're doing that on the 29th of October. Just one lap.com slash events for more information and booking. So let's go to Capitech. Uh, results came out. Uh, I didn't talk about it in last week's uh, 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 JSC Direct. Uh, certainly the results were out by that point, but I hadn't. The, the, the question is quite simple. I thought Capitech is expensive. Uh, by many uh, metrics, it is expensive, right? Sitting on a PE at that point of around 30-odd percent, a price to book of seven-plus times. Uh, your other banks are sitting on PEs of high single or low double digits, and price to books of around one and a half. So Capitec is expensive. He has a fun fact, though. In 20 years, it's up 30-fold. In a decade, it's up 15-fold. And by all accounts, it's like, oh, man, this is an expensive share. You know, shouldn't we be worried? Really, should we be buying it or should we just absolutely move on? I was kind of in the camp of, man, this looks like an expensive share. And it is, let's be clear, uh, forward PE of 27, price to book of 7.8. I mean, that is a giant price to book. That is a giant forward PE. If we look at the means, uh, the mean price to book is 5.6. Uh, the mean PE is 25, forward PE 27. But here's the thing. They grew 36%. They are the uh, uh, biggest uh, uh, MVNO, uh, mobile network in the country. Not bigger than Vodacom and MTN, of course, but they they, they, they on sell and they are the largest. They do a deal with uh, Showmax where you can buy like a day's access. They're going to be doing that with DSTV. So you want to watch the rugby. You don't have to pay a thousand bucks for DSTV premium or whatever it costs. No, no, you buy one day access. They really have shifted. They are moving into insurance products. They've got their business banking side. They're looking at European markets. This is not 
a business that seems to suddenly have found like no, you know, X growth. My concern was how do they keep on growing at giant numbers? And the answer is, well, yeah, they manage it. They absolutely do manage it. Now, the high price target's 3,400. The average is 2,700. The low is 14,480. There are seven holds, one sell, one strong sell. There are no buys. There are no strong buys. So the world is saying, stay away from Capitec. Okay, but hang on a second. Let's roll this out 10 years down the line. I mean, is Capitec going to suddenly lose their mojo? Is Capitec suddenly going to fall over and stop growing? Maybe they're going to stop growing at 36%. That needs to happen at some point. I get it. But are they going to suddenly grow at only 5%? No, surely not. They're slightly opening the taps in terms of lending. Now, let's be clear, they've had a tough period uh, coming through the pandemic, the high rates, the, the, the high inflation. It certainly has been tough for Capitec, but it's not like it's going to suddenly just all you know, disappear and, and, and you know, they're going to go bust. They're not by any stretch. They're going to start lending again, and they're able to control that to levels which are just almost unprecedented, I want to say. So, Actually, earnings going forward are going to pick up as we move into the better environment. i got to say, I, I, I held Capitec forever in a day. I eventually took some money on it, and I'm like, yeah, this thing's just got far too expensive. Um, but, I mean, that break thereof was about 2100 2200 uh, That seems to have been the significant break. I am watching this chart. So it seems to be topping a bit. I think we might see some weakness. I don't know how low it's going to go. And it's weird because I exited my Capitex, but I want it back as a core portfolio holding. You know, other stocks that would be in there, ShopRite, another one I hold. Uh, you know, maybe it's also Clicks. In, in the olden days, your core portfolio was SAB, British American Tobacco, uh, Anglo American, but the world has changed. And maybe, I, th I think, I can't help thinking, I think Capitec is the shop right of, of food retailer. You know, they've got a cost to income that sits in the, the low 40s, high 30s. The other banks are trying to get it to 30%. You also note the other banks, Standard, ABSA, Nedbank, they're all trying to move into the private banking space. Look at all of their advertising out there. It's about private bank. They're kind of seeding that middle ground, the mass market, the middle class. They're kind of saying that's folks who are earning typically below 800000 Above 800000 you can go get a private bank account with a fancy bank. Whether you want to, another story entirely. But kind of the market is saying, the, the banking market is saying, you know what, Capitec, you win. You can go and take all of these uh, 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 sort of mass market middle class accounts. I like it. I think there is still some good potential there. Uh, let's look at some of the other stocks out there. Um, what we've got is, uh, let's go to purple. Again, another stock that I hold. So I had a bunch. I sold a bunch of it back at uh, three rand and some change when it absolutely rallied like crazy. I took money off the table. But certainly things are coming back for purple. Let's zoom in. We only need one year of data. There was a seller at 80 cents. That seller had been in the market since May. You could see it in the bid and offers. It wasn't a seller. There was, at one point, I think there were 11 people selling at 80 cents on purple. And, and that was there since May. So where are we now? October. Five months there was a wall of uh, sale at 80 cents. That wall suddenly disappeared. Now, I don't know if the, the sellers all just got bought and that's what happened. I wasn't paying, I, I wasn't looking is, is the honest answer. No, I, so I, I don't know, or maybe they pulled it and they've gone to higher prices. But we'll often see this where there is supply coming into the market and where the seller is perhaps a little bit, or sellers, a little bit lazy in that they just dumped the stock at the 80 cents and, and they kind of keep a lid on the price. Of course they do. And there was at, at one point there was what two and a half million shares. That is multiple trading days for Purple Group. And then it disappears, and you could see particularly the last couple of weeks since early September that there was absolutely keeping a lid on it. And that 80 cents was getting hit and getting taken out. Disappears, bang, stock goes up to a high of uh, what's my high there? 98 cents. It's pulled back. Closed yesterday, Wednesday at 91 cents. Is on the move again. It's, so what did they make? I'm rounding numbers here. They made about a cent for the first half. They say they make two cents for the full year. That is a 45 PE. That's not cheap by any stretch. 
But if we have got markets, so if you look at the JC, average volumes was doing about 15 billion. It's now many days doing over 20 billion. Some of that is going to be Capitech clients. In this market, which is a bull market and a proving economy, and people have got some cash, folks like Purple and stockbrokers can absolutely benefit from that. Uh, let's see. I don't know what sort of level of data they're going to have here. Uh, they've got it on. They don't even have it on a PE. They've got a price to book of two. Now, nah, that's fine. We won't worry about that. Uh, Purple's one I hold and I am liking. Uh, so no stresses there. Afrimat came out with a trading update, which initially – uh, spooked the market, and then the market seemed to sort of like say, uh, hang on a second, we get what's happening here. Their earnings per share is going to be down between 75 and 85%. I expected weaker earnings from uh, Afrimat. I didn't expect it maybe quite that bad. I mean, what the story was, what, what's hurting them is a couple of things. Uh, the Lafarge which they've bought, and it's going to cost money. It is loss-making. They reckon it's going to take them a year to get it profitable. They say two of the of the, of the the six months they actually uh, made some money. Flip side, four of the six months it was loss-making, but they will turn that around. That's in the numbers. They've got issues with iron ore prices. They had issues with a, a, a client. There's been some challenges there. There certainly was some sell-off coming through, uh, and it did get down to sort of the 62s and some change. Uh, bounced a fair bit, but is under a bit of pressure. As I say, I'm not surprised by this bit of pressure. I, I think it could go, I mean, it's potentially going to go sub-60. And as I say, I'm not massively surprised by the pressure and the results, and I think the full year is not going to be particularly great either. But I think it's an absolutely top stock, and if the president does turn our country into a construction site, Afrimat is there. There's only one analyst here. I don't expect to get a lot. The South African small caps, I use Koifin. If you want to, if you want Koifin, it's a great service. It's expensive. Uh, head to one of the show notes in JC Direct. There's a link there. You'll get a discount for your uh, for your purchase, and then I get twenty dollars back for. Uh, they don't pay me the twenty dollars. They credit me for my next subscription. So we all get a little bit from it. So the PE is twelve point seven. That's going to jump as earnings absolutely collapse. I don't think it's massively expensive. I think, if anything, there is perhaps some opportunity here uh, with Afrimat if we start seeing some more selling coming through. So Afrimat, one that I absolutely do like uh, and I think is well worth a shout. And then a stock that I haven't really looked at forever in a day, but uh, someone on Twitter uh, picked it up and I was like, yo, hang on a sec, let's look at that and see what's happening. It is Wilson Bailey. Uh, Overcom Homes. What's the WBO is is the the the, the code. Uh, Richard Thompson is the chap who posted about it. A seventeen year consolidation is now suddenly, well, not suddenly, and not just now, has broken higher. I mean, technically, this is massive. This is just crazy stuff. It, literally, we're going all the way back here to two thousand and eight, which was all the excitement into the World Cup. Then we discovered that the construction companies were cheats and colluding uh, and, and the bottom fell out of the South African market. All of the spending, which government had been doing, disappeared, industry disappeared. And what we have here is a consolidation that has essentially lasted 16 years, 16 years, and now is breaking higher or has broken higher. We might get a pullback. We might get a test. I, I you know, Afrimat would probably be my preferred if you're looking for the construction boom locally, but these days they're so much also into industrials. They've got you know uh, 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 the, the the iron ore and all the other uh, industrial metals. Uh, Wilson Bailey, a much purer in that regard, and perhaps certainly well worth having a look at that one. A, a great uh, a chart pulled up. Uh, you should give Richard a follow. He's a good old school fashioned uh, trading uh, on South African and U.S. markets. Uh, interestingly, he publishes his returns. He doesn't publish his trades, but he publishes his returns. I don't know of anyone, except for, of course, I mean, if you are a fund manager, you publish your returns. But outside of fund managers, I know of no one who publishes returns. So uh, kudos to him for that and uh, well worth a follow, I think. And then a the last chart I want to have a look at before we end for the week, NVIDIA. I hold NVIDIA. 
Uh, this is the weekly chart, Lex. So what you notice with NVIDIA, and this goes back a couple of years, consolidation. Consolidation in this case that ran from May 22 through to January of 23. Another consolidation from, let's say, mid-23 through to uh, Jan of 24. Uh, and when it breaks those consolidations, the first two, uh, that one and that one, the break then saw the share price double. This consolidation here, this wasn't so much a consolidation as it was a resistance at about the 90. Uh, again, it went up 50% from there. It had pulled back all the way to test it. And now it's back at that resistance, which is also otherwise known as all-time highs. Uh, as I say, I hold NVIDIA. You're going to tell me it's expensive. We'll have a squiz at that in a moment. But it is looking to break again. Now, we've got two breaks that gave us 100%, one break that gave us 50%. My math says this break is probably a 25 to 50% break higher just because prices and valuations are getting crazy. But what we are seeing, make no mistake, the demand remains in place. It absolutely does. Uh, quick snapshot, we're going to see some eye-watering numbers here. So PE is currently 62, forward PE is 39, the mean is 60. Now they've got to do big numbers. Financial year 2025, they've got to do the expected revenue up over 100% and earnings per share up over 100%. But they're a couple of quarters in and so far so good. Uh, NVIDIA kind of does it. And then it does start to slow down according to that. We shall see about that. But it is yeah, you know, it's just an absolutely crazy stock. It's an absolutely crazy stock, but it's underpinned by earnings. And I'll show you that in a moment. So the average uh, valuation on NVIDIA is 150 or well, 149 and change. The high is 200, the low is 90. There's no sales, no strong sales. Uh, people love this share. They absolutely love the share. And folks are all saying this thing is probably going higher. Here's my favorite Free cash flow per share. I think we've looked at this before with NVIDIA uh, and let's zoom out. So what you can see is the share price and what we've got. In fact, I need to make, let me just quickly uh, change that. I want to change the historical candle and I want to make it uh, that there. Okay, that's much better to look. Let me save it like that. The blue is the, the free cash flow per share. Uh, and NVIDIA has lagged it and then kind of got ahead of it. But the point is, is that what you can see is a massive increase in free, free cash flow per share. At the same time, the share has boomed, at, you know, correspondingly. This is not a share price that is booming on smoke and mirrors. This is a share price that is booming on actual numbers and actual revenue and profit and the skimpiest smallest most embarrassing dividend i've ever seen what is the dividend yield it is quite something uh dividend yield 0.03 percent one wonders almost why they bother i suppose if you own millions of shares maybe that's why you bother we'll leave it there for today uh, remember the events coming up next week and then again on the 29th just one lap.com slash events my name is simon look after yourself if you can look after somebody else as well and we'll chat again next week